How's everyone doing today? Hope everybody is doing all right. We're going to go over some of the differences between the rubber string or the polyurethane, rather, string U base and a full scale electric base. So if you like videos like these, please hit subscribe below, consider becoming a patron, and just know that I do videos once every Tuesday um, that are lessons and live streams every Thursday at 7 p.m. Eastern time. So if you'd like to tune in, please do that and become a subscriber so that you get notified about it. All right, so first let's just talk about some of the obvious differences between the U-Base and the Electric Base. First, there's an obvious scale difference, right? We know that we've got like a 34 inch scale on the full size electric base and more like a 20 inch scale on the U-Base. So this is gonna present a difference right away. So we're gonna cover the differences based on having to get your hands to be closer together. We're gonna cover the differences based on adjusting to these kind of loose rubber band like strings. Um, we're gonna talk about how to adjust to the pickup. The pickup's a little bit different and so therefore the instrument reacts a little bit differently. And we're going to talk about things you can do um, to get the tones to be more similar and maybe how to EQ each one if we have time. So let's get, let's get into it real quick. Oh, and we might talk about tuning the strings as well. So first, if you play electric bass, you know that um, you have to do some pretty big stretches. The advantage to you bass is you won't have to do those giant stretches. The disadvantage is when you're playing further up the neck, frets will be really, really close together and that'll be something to get used to. So what I kind of recommend on this is if you play um, on, on bass, if you play patterns with your pointer finger and your pinky, you know, like let's say you're playing like a blues pattern, like tore down. Let me turn that volume up on here. But if you're playing that kind of pattern and you're using your pinky, It'll probably work okay um, if you're going from your pointer to your pinky, but it'll be more comfortable on U-Bass, especially if we're playing in a different key further up the neck, if you just go ahead and think of a one finger per fret approach. So basically what I'm saying is you'll want to use your pointer finger and your ring finger rather than your pointer finger and your pinky because um, your, your hands will kind of get used to being closer together, especially when you're up high. It's not as much of a big deal when you're at the third fret or below, but as you get up the neck, you'll want to do that. Hey, Robert, how's it going? So um, that's one thing to get used to is just is just a lot of the things that you were playing, you may have to shift over. Like sometimes I'll play Donna Lee. And when I play it on the um, electric bass, I'll use more like an upright style approach where I use my pinky and my ring finger together and I can't even physically fit fit the pinky and the ring finger into that fret when I'm playing here, starting with my middle finger and then using my pinky. So, so I just go ahead and have to alter my technique to using these three fingers instead of this one, this one, and these two together. Now, if you've been following through a lot of my exercises or you've been playing from some other methods, you might already be doing one finger per fret and not have to worry about this. But if you play upright as well, it might be an adjustment to get into. But from electric bass to U-Bass, that's just one thing to keep in mind is the frets are going to be closer together. So there are certain situations where you'll have to do one finger per fret. Um, one of the advantages, though, is if you're used to stretching your hand pretty far, you can get a really, really big reach. Right? And so that's a big advantage um, on the U-Bass is that you don't have to stretch your hands as far to get many notes that are further down. Okay, so another thing that we'll want to get used to is um, the feel of the strings. So like I was saying before, they're made of polyurethane and they feel like rubber bands. So one problem that that might present is if you're used to playing really fast on the electric bass, you might not be used to this feeling of the string and your fingers might get caught up on it. So if you're used to using a lot of fingertip on the electric bass to get a nice, warm, well-rounded tone, you don't need nearly as much finger to hit the string here. In fact, it'll cause friction and get in the way. Hi, Jeff. How's it going? So um, 
you want to use less finger than you would on electric bass. So instead of using like the entire fingertip, if you like that sound on electric bass, we may want to use half or less as we're plucking through so we can keep it light. The other thing is if you're playing down here, your fingers will get caught up on the string more. And if you play over by the bridge, you get a little bit more of a percussive attack and it'll be easier to hear and distinguish each note and play a little bit faster. Also, the string tension's higher up here. It's the same as electric bass. It's the reason Jocko played over the bridge pickup rather than the neck pickup. So that's something to get used to. Another thing, and this is more noticeable on the metal strings, but um, the type of pickup in these U basses is, I believe, a piezo, piezo, I don't, I don't know how to pronounce it. Forgive me for butchering it, but much like an acoustic guitar pickup, and therefore, it picks up every little scratchy sound, every single bit of st string noise that you can imagine. So right now, I have the treble dialed back to get rid of that. But you can hear, it just gets a whole bunch of string noise. So if you misfret a note, you'll get a bunch of buzz rather than just a little bit. And things will be kind of clicky. So what I do to get rid of that is I take my treble knob and I dial it back a little bit more than I normally would just so that it doesn't have as much of that string noise. And sometimes I'll move the mids down a little bit too if it's still there. To get a nice deep tone. So that's something to keep in mind if you're just kind of tired of the noise that it's making, you can do that and then and then it's a little bit more, more well-rounded. I think I dialed it back too much. I think I have the bass up too much too, okay. Yeah, I think that's a much, much better thing. So there's getting used to that as well. So um, another thing that's kind of frustrating at first when you get the U-Bass after playing electric bass is when you go to tune, sometimes the strings will hang up on the nut. So that's this little part right here. And so if they do that, you'll be tightening the string and then you'll notice it doesn't feel like it actually tuned up at all. So what you're gonna do is you're gonna tighten it how much you think you would need to and then you're gonna lift the string off of the nut and then let it back down again. And then that'll let the string kind of, you know, pull to where it's balanced before, before it lands again. And so hopefully you'll get a real idea of, of how the string is being pulled from here and from there. So you may have to do that a little bit more. The other thing is if your bass ukulele or U bass is new, you're gonna have to stretch the strings a lot more to get them to stay in tune in the first place. So that if you're coming from ukulele, you're used to this, or from ukulele, you're used to this, but if you're coming from bass, we don't really have to stretch the strings much at all, right? Just a little bit right on the first time that we put them on there. But the um, U-bass strings might take anywhere from a week, you know, a week to, to set in, um, a few days to a week to set in, I would say. If you stretch them a little bit, it shouldn't take longer than that. All right, so another thing that's different about these two is with electric bass, and I'll just go ahead and Grab it real quick. Ah. We typically have a place for our thumb. We can anchor our thumb on the pickup. So if you're used to doing this and just kind of reaching over to play like that, that's going to be something you're going to miss on the U-Bass. E so you may have to alter your technique a little bit. So let's talk about options. So if you're like me, you already have experimented with different thumb options, even on the electric bass. But if you haven't, that's OK. But basically, instead of putting your thumb on the pickup, you can kind of let it float while you're playing the E string and then set it on the E string to anchor it while you're playing the other strings. Now, once again, if you're getting a lot of string noise out of the U bass, then this probably won't work as well. But if you have that tone dialed in, it should work just fine. So if, if I'm playing the E string, I'll let my thumb kind of float. Notice how it's not touching anything and it's just my arm that's kind of anchoring the U-Bass. The e okay, but then if I'm playing the other strings, my thumb will just sit on the E-String, which acts as a mute. It mutes the E-String while I'm playing the other strings. And if you really wanted to, you could do the floating thumb technique, which allows you to mute all the strings that you're not playing as you go down with your thumb. Well, at least on the way going down. On the way back up, you might have to meet with the left hand. 
but that's the same as electric bass. So the floating thumb technique is something that you might want to use on the U-Bass, or you could always add a thumb rest or even anchor your thumb over here on the neck if you really like this really deep sound that you get out of it. It's kind of a cool tone. But it's hard to play fast up here. So if you're wanting to play closer to the bridge, it might be good to have that floating thumb technique. So does anybody have any questions about any of the techniques I'm talking about and what they mean? Um, I know that I, that I knew somebody that, um, should you loosen strings in between playing sessions? Um, on the U bass or on the electric bass, normally you don't have to. Normally they kind of, it's kind of nice to have it pulling just a little bit. With the rubber strings especially, they're not gonna pull on the neck that much. So you don't really have to worry about wear and tear on the neck unless, unless you don't have a um, truss rod and you have like flat wounds or something on it or there, then yeah, you may want to loosen the strings so that they don't warp the neck. But with pretty much any other kind of string, I wouldn't worry about it at all. Um, on electric bass, I've never really had, I'm trying to think of an, of an exception. I've never really had an issue with that. So no, Jeff, I don't think you'll have to do that at all. You can if you want to, but there's no need. All right, so let's see, where were we? So that, that tells you about the string noise, and we talked about the tuning as well. We talked about um, the scale. So basically, the notes get really, really close together as you go up the neck. So it's just gonna be something that you gotta get used to. Um, you're not gonna have to shift as much up there. In fact, you might be able to reach out to play notes in different positions, so that's kind of that's kind of a nice thing about the bass. It's allowed me to, to do some things and arrangements that I couldn't do on electric bass. All right, so now that we've talked about those things, there's a few other things we should talk about. One of them being slap. It's really hard to get a good slap sound out of the E string and compared to the electric bass. But if you slap over on the neck, that might give you a good amount of thump. So you might want to do it right over the fretboard instead of back here. Honestly, it's just a different tone. So you just gotta get used to that. And then when you pop the strings, it's pretty much the same as it would be on the electric bass. You just have to make sure not to pop them too hard. Oh, so let's talk about a couple of other things. With the frets, you wanna be right in the middle of the fret. A lot of times on electric bass, I'll be kind of like more up from there, but honestly with with a lot of them, especially if you have lower action, it may be better to just be right in the middle, or you might get a little bit of get a little bit of buzz, or you might detune the note as well. So um, just push down in the middle and don't push down too hard. That's another thing. You don't have to push down nearly as hard to get the notes to stay down. Right? So that's something cool about the bass. Um, some advantages of it, if you're used to playing electric bass and you've done a lot of tapping on the um, U bass, it's a little bit easier to tap. As you noticed in my last video, I did Funky Town. And when I was doing that, you get the idea. Um, basically, I was able to do that a lot easier than I would have been able to do on the metal strings or on the U bass. So one advantage is that you can really tap without having to like hurt your hands. So that's one of the advantages of that. Even if the action's a little bit high, it's still easier to tap than on a bass with normal action, a full scale electric bass with normal action. All right, so does anybody have any questions about what I've gone over so far? Or does anybody have questions about adjusting from electric bass to U bass that I haven't covered yet? Just let me know in the comments. I'm going to keep going until then. So another thing, the um, the pickup is is pretty is pretty standard. So it's got similar concepts to the to the volume knobs and the tone knobs on an electric bass. Um, it's not like a jazz bass because a jazz bass has a neck pickup or a bridge pickup selection. We only have the one pickup down here, 
So we don't have any, any switching that we can do in that regard. So we have three tone knobs instead. And uh, if you have a upper end U bass, they only have one knob and it goes back and forth between bass and treble. So if you turn it to like, I think I've got it right this way. If you turn it to, you know, two or three, it's a very bass sound, bass driven sound, very thumpy. And if you turn it to um, getting towards 10, it, get, it adds treble to it, basically. All right. Can you lower the action on the U-Bass? That's a great question. There are a couple of ways to lower the action, but it's a lot more in depth than it would be with, um, with an electric bass. So with an electric bass, you can lower the action. I'm just gonna explain this for people that, that are just U-Bass players. You can lower the action here. And basically all you have to do is you take an Allen key and you turn that screw and this screw and it'll bring the string height down or it'll bring it back up if you want to. And we don't have anything like that on the U-Bass. So in order to change the action, you've got a couple options. If it's too high, then, um, then you, you might have a truss rod adjustment to do. And if that's the case, you can kind of like straighten the neck out just slightly using the truss rod and you get to the truss rod through the sound hole. Um, but if, if that's not the issue and you feel like the neck is great and you just want the string height lower, there are a couple things you may have to do. You may have to file down the notches on the nut is one way. And then because the pickup is underneath the strings, I'm not sure what exactly you'll have to do to lower the action on that side. So, um, so that's a little bit trickier about this. You might be able to, it looks like the pickups on top, there might be a way to just sand down the bridge if you're able to take it off and do that. But I would never do that kind of work. I would always take it to somebody else to do that. There may be an e easier way to do it, but uh, I would talk to some people in the U-Base Freaks group that do a whole bunch, and it's on Facebook, by the way, U-Base Freaks and U-Base without the dash. Um, there are a lot of people in there that are into modding their U-Bases, and so they've done a lot of work on there that I haven't yet. I haven't had to lower the action on any of them. Um, usually if there was an action issue for me, it would always be on the nut side of things. So um, I would just file the grooves down. You can also replace the nut. I know they have one specifically for the round wounds. Um, once again, I'm not sure how it's really connected there, if it's glued or if you just pop it off. So if anybody's had any... Um, any experience with that, please leave a comment here for the other people that are wondering about this. But yeah, in order to lower the action, you'll probably have to do things of that nature. But for me, I had to do a truss rod adjustment on mine anyway, and that brought the action down to where I'm pretty comfortable with it. And honestly, with the rubber strings, you kind of want a higher action, and they're polyurethane technically. Um, you kind of want a, a higher action so that they can vibrate, because they vibrate a little bit wider than metal strings do. So you just want that room there to give them room to vibrate. That was a great question. And good evening, Zach. How are you doing? It is much easier to play. And so that's another thing. If you're having hand issues and you're a bass player, you may want to try doing new bass because it's, it's definitely easier to play. I have a little bit of a wrist issue here. And like I was saying, when I did the Funky Town video the other day, I was practicing it on both U basses. Um, where I had the flat wound strings on my college journeyman. And then I have the um, polyurethane strings here. And I decided to just do the polyurethane ones because my hand was starting to hurt after practicing on the other one. So sometimes it's just necessary with certain songs to, to play on something where it's easier to push down. And given that there's not a super easy way to lower the action on there, I went went ahead and did the rubber did the rubber strings, the polyurethane strings. Yes, that's a great insight, Zach. Insight, Zach. Appreciate that. So, um, some other adjustments. Let's see what else. What else would take some getting used to? Let's say you had to change a string, or that you wanted to change the strings. Okay, so on electric bass, when you change the strings. <clears throat> Sometimes they go through the body. On mine, they don't. They just go through the bridge. See if I can get this angle to where you can see it. See these little, these are the string heads, these little colorful bead looking things. 
So basically all you do is you just run the string through there, run it all the way up here. You put the center of the string down, you hold it down with your thumb and you tighten it. Um, with the rubber strings, there's a knot, a special knot that works best if you tie these around a certain way. And there's a video that Kala made on how to do that. But um, the rubber strings or the polyurethane strings rather, they stretch a lot. So if you just do it the same way that you do this, they'd pull through eventually and it would probably just come off. So with certain ones, you have to tie a little bit of a knot in there to keep it on. And I think that was with the D string and the G string. But otherwise, it's the same concept. You have access on the back. So you just take off the back plate, which this one's not magnetic, but some of them are. Um, so in this case, I just have to unscrew that. In other cases, you just pull off the back plate, just pull on the magnets. And then um, you have a knot in the string that just kind of like sticks underneath there so it doesn't pop through. And you just you just wind them pretty much the same way. As you can see, these have a little bit too much extra string. If I were to replace them, I would probably cut the string a little bit shorter so that it doesn't wrap all the way down over the bottom. I've heard that some people have had issues with, uh, with too much winding here messing up the tuners over time. I haven't had that issue, but I've heard that from a few people. But um, yeah, so those are a lot of the main differences. So let me see if I can go over them more in order. So with the stickiness, you got to adjust to the strings. A couple ways to do that. Some people um, will put certain, certain things on their fingers. I've heard a whole bunch of different things from people dipping their fingers in water before playing. Um, there's something called fast fret, and I imagine that works on metal. I'm not sure if it works on here, but just anything to reduce the friction so that you can play faster. So um, one, one thing to get used to is kind of if you're trying to play something fast in time, that, that your fingers might get caught a little bit on the strings, and at first you might have a little bit of a delay from, from when you want the sound to come out. So you just got to practice it and, and make sure when you're if you like record it and listen back to it, that the sound's coming out in the timing that you want it to. Okay, and then the next thing, there's no real place to anchor your thumb. So I either let my thumb float, or I will, if I'm not playing the E string, I'll rest my thumb on the E string unless I'm playing it, and then I'll just let it float right while I'm playing the E string, and then put it back down, and it mutes the E string too while I'm playing the other strings. So you can see my thumb floating up for me to play the E and then just going back down. And then the other option is the floating thumb technique. Ironically, it's called that because your thumb will just move with you. So when it's up here, it's not touching the string at all. But then as soon as you get to the other strings, it just follows you down and mutes the strings that you're not using. So it's a cool muting technique in addition to that. And then when you're going back the other way, you'll have to mute with the left hand. Okay. So then string noise is another thing you want to get used to because of the difference in pickup. Um, like an acoustic guitar, you know how you get all that string noise, that ch -ch slidey kind of sounds, that kind of thing. It's not so bad on the polyurethane strings and honestly on the um, pohoehoes, I think is what they're called. The, they're black strings instead of white strings. They, um, they have even less string noise. So I kind, of, I kind of like those for that reason. Although I've heard things like they stretch a little bit more and they don't stay in tune as well. But um, in order to get rid of that string noise, I just dial the treble back a little bit and sometimes the mids a little bit more than I normally would. All right, so then the smaller frets higher up, just getting used to cramming your fingers together. Do the one finger per fret technique, not upright bass technique. Um, sometimes I do upright bass technique on the electric bass because it still helps with not having to spread your fingers out too far when you're down in like first position or half position is what it would be on the um, upright, but first fret, you know, playing down there. Instead of doing one finger per fret, sometimes I'll do the index finger will get the first fret, the middle finger will get the second fret notes, and the pinky will get the third fret notes. And sometimes I'll use the ring finger and pinky together to push down. But on, on the U-Bass, you don't need to do that. Just one finger per fret works great, and it never feels that uncomfortable in your hand. All right, and then the big thing, once again, just recapping everything, is tuning. When you're tuning with these, sometimes you might be tuning and you might turn the, turn the tuning peg. Let's see if it'll do it this time. See, I turned it really far, 
and it barely, barely, barely changed, which is crazy. You know, in electric base, it would change like crazy there. And that's because this part of the string is getting caught up on the nut. So if we lift it up and then set it back down, it, it'll, it'll show the difference a little bit more from where the string really is. And then loosening it's the same thing. Yeah, so you get the idea. So I'm going to tune down below and then tune it back up. Actually, that's right where I want it to be. So there's that issue with it too. But once you get used to that, it stays in tune pretty well. And honestly, I think the Thunder Guts stay, stay in tune a little bit better than the other um, polyurethane strings. So I would go with something like the Thunder Guts um, and possibly some of the other um, Aquila strings for that reason. All right, let's see if we got any questions. All right, so resting, resting the thumb on the E string is totally fine. You don't have to do the floating thumb. And honestly, it may cause more string noise as you're going back and forth when you do the floating thumb. But it is kind of a, it is kind of a cool thing. But yep, when you play the E string, you have to lift up your thumb one way or the other. But that's a good um, observation. All right. Ah, so now we're talking about the one string, the one string 12 bar blues. So basically last week I created something called the one string challenge, uh, one string U bass challenge. And what we're doing is we're playing a 12 bar blues, very, very common bass line. all on one string. And it doesn't work very well in here because I need to do a truss rod adjustment. Those frets still, um, still kind of buzz a lot. So if you have one that buzzes a lot up here, you could take those notes, subtract five frets from where they'd be and they end up on the D string. And I know it's not the one string blues challenge. So if you wanted to keep it all on one string, you could take those notes down an octave by subtracting 12 frets. So instead of going, um, whoops, up here, I could go, um, okay, well, that's the 14th fret and the 15th fret. Subtract 12 from those two numbers. You end up with the second fret and the third fret. So you could do that too. Right? So you could do that, or you could subtract five from them and get them onto the D string. So if that was the the 14th and 15th fret, 14 minus five is nine, and then 15 minus five is 10. So you end up with the ninth and 10th fret on the D string. So you could go. And if you have to do that because of the instrument, I'm gonna allow that on the um, one string blues challenge. But if you don't have those issues that this particular one does, then there's no need to do it. Just a thought. All right. And the string kept going out of tune, it felt like. OK, so one thing there, it's either the string's going out of tune or the intonation's a little bit off. So this is another thing with the U-Bass. A lot of times, the intonation does get a little bit strange up here. And that's typically why I would prefer doing the one string bass challenge on like a full scale electric bass, because because a lot of this, especially the um, the ones under the four hundred dollar price range, can have some issues with um, with intonation because of how high the strings need to be from the neck. You're pushing down a lot, and so sometimes that'll make the notes go sharp when you're up there. And there's not really a great way around it. It'd probably be easier to to um, correct for on a fretless. But um, that's just part of the challenge. And so if it's a little bit out of tune when you submit the, um, the blues challenge, I'm OK with that. So don't worry about that too much. But if you want them to be less out of tune, you could also do that thing where you subtract five frets from the ones way up high and get them onto the D string. But uh, I don't think it's your actual string going out of tune. And it might be just depending on the strings and stuff. But um, it's probably more that the intonation, just when you get really high, gets a little bit hairy um on on the least expensive ones so just something to keep in mind and it's been a big a big criticism from a lot of people i've noticed less of that um on the 
flat wound strings and the round wound strings. And I also haven't, haven't really noticed an intonation issue. Um, I have to go through and check, but um, it's never bugged me before with the round wound strings on the exotic mahogany U bass. So um, I think it's just kind of assumed that most people are going to be playing down below the seventh fret. So as long as it's good up to the seventh fret and maybe even the eighth or ninth fret, then, then it's pretty good. The one string blues challenge is just something kind of fun to do. But that is um, it's a, a great thing to, to mention. So um, in addition to all that stuff, like other things to get used to, let's see. There may not be much else. I think once you really get over those those little things, it's just a just a matter of um, preference after that. So um, you know, with the slap, I know I mentioned earlier, that's a little bit different. I know a lot of people don't like that sound. I think it's cool, but it's a very very different sound from the electric bass slap. <laughs> All right, so I see Soul Night Live. So that's my buddy Sean, and me and him actually play in a band where um, we do a lot of progressive rock stuff and some original things. But he also has a podcast where he interviews a bunch of more kind of more famous musicians. So um, I think pretty soon he'll have Rick Wakeman on his show. So if you know who that is, the keyboard player from. Yes, that's pretty awesome. And he's had some really cool people on the show in the last few weeks, too. Um, and sometimes he gets me to help help guest interview with him on there. So I would definitely check out his channel if you get a chance. It's the one in the comments that says Soul Night Live. So check that out if you get a chance. Let's see, Jeff, what do you say? Haven't been able to play for a while. My right hand fingers are swelled and infected. Oof. I hope your hand's okay. That sounds really rough. Um, I hope it's not not um, bass related stuff, but I mean, infected doesn't doesn't sound like something. I hope you're okay. I hope you didn't didn't injure your hand some crazy way or something. But I hope you feel better soon. But yeah, so once once you really get those things down, that's that's really about it for the differences. So we could just talk about um, kind of just just adjusting to it and comparing the sounds of each. So I guess when you're messing with the tone knobs, you might have some differences there. When you add treble, it gets very clicky very quickly. You get a really, really strong attack. The mids are a big part of the tone. So if you turn the treble all the way down and had the mids up, really gets entirely rid of that string noise issue but at the cost of it doesn't you know project as well and then of course the bass knob does exactly what it's supposed to do and just boost the bass sound but uh to answer your question sean i probably could play anything which is one of the original songs Let's see. Except for that one note is buzzing more than usually. But yeah, um, so I could probably still play the melody for that, and then everything else, of course, works down here. Um, I haven't done a solo arrangement of it, if that's what you mean. Well, I'm sorry to I'm sorry to hear about your your hands. Hopefully, they'll feel better soon, and you'll be able to get back into playing. Hmm. So let's just compare some different sounds with them. So this is uh, with everything flat on my EQ. I'm just going to play that, that standard blues line, but not on one string for now. Here we go. And you notice my hands are getting a little bit sticky. Humidity down here is has gotten me. So that's basically what it sounds like, and you got to kind of make sure that your hands don't get so sticky that it starts affecting your timing. So that's something you really don't have to worry about on electric bass that you would have to worry about on U bass. Be a 
a little bit of background music while I plug this in. So you kind of get the idea that it's a very, very different tone. So one advantage to the full scale bass is playing up here. Is that the notes up high ring out a lot clearer. So I'm gonna do a little hybrid jam. Now we got that, so we can hear the differences between some of the things we were doing earlier. So you get the idea there, some slap. <laughs> but you get the idea there. If I already do the same thing on the U bass, I'd probably have to boost the treble to get it to cut a little bit. But the good news is that um, the string noise will be covered up a little bit by having other things going on. So a lot of that string noise issue won't really be an issue when you're playing with a drummer. treble and a little bit more mids to get it to cut. So that may be a little overkill with the treble. some slap. Okay, I'm going to pull back on the treble. So that's the other thing. You might have to change your settings a little bit more to get a good sound. So you see it just doesn't cut as much. So you got to experiment with the tone a little bit more to get get all that to cut. get the idea on that so um so some of the differences there um with electric bass you'll be able to play a lot of stuff up high and with with you bass you may not want to um 
play this high on the neck because you'll have to reach over the body and do stuff like that. So that's another thing that you may have to adjust to if you don't get one of the U-bases with the cutaway. So um, if you're switching from electric bass to a U-bass with round wound strings, the differences are a little bit different. And um, one of the things about the round wound strings that's kind of strange is that when you bend the strings, they roll under your fingers. So let me see if I can demonstrate that. Uh, here's the one with the round wound strings. This is my exotic mahogany one. But if I, if I were to bend up here on the 12th fret, the string is just kind of rolling, you know? So it's almost like you can't keep it on this under the same part of your fingertip as easily because it wants to roll out from under you. So you got to get used to just rolling with it and then rolling it back down. So that's kind of strange and something to get used to. And that has to do with the scale of the string, but also that the middle of the string is made of nylon, so it just feels different and decides to roll that way. Uh, another thing to get used to, um, with the round wounds, they have really deep ridges, so if you try to slide, you can do it, but just expect it to hurt a little bit more and you might have to build some calluses up over time, so that's something to keep in mind too. Okay. Let's see. Yeah, a little bit of... Ba okay, so um, Zach says that when you're trying to play on the rubber strings, a little bit of baby powder will help get rid of that friction. So I'm guessing it just dries out your fingertips a little bit. So then that way you're not sticking to the strings as much. It just reduces the friction. But um, back to the, the metal strings, when you, when you slide up, it works, it's just a little bit harder on your fingers. With the flat wounds, sliding works great. So if you are adjusting from an electric base to a U base with flat wound strings, then you are, um, then you know, you're able to slide easier. And if you're used to an electric base with flat wound strings, it's very, very similar. It's not as much adjusting at all to get used to. It's just the frets being closer together and the type of pickup causing a little bit more string noise. So that's just something to kind of keep in mind there. And, uh, you know, like I was saying before, tapping is easier. Tapping is easier on the rubber strings. You can do it on the other strings as well. But um, since a lot of these instruments are set up for the polyurethane or rubber strings, the action's a little bit higher. And the tension on the flat wound strings is a lot higher than the tension on the rubber strings. So um, I don't recommend getting that if your plan is to tap 50% of the time or something. And also it has a totally different kind of slap sound than the round wound string. So it just depends on what you're going for. Ah, uh, that's another thing I want to mention. The slap sound on the round wound strings is actually a lot nicer than on the rubber, well, it's not nicer than on the rubber strings, but it sounds a lot more like an electric bass. So just something to keep in mind if you're getting it to be able to slap, if you're getting it as like a practice tool rather than a, just your main instrument. You can practice slap on the round wound strings and it sounds very similar to electric. Um, one difference though is when you go to pluck a string, it'll still roll a little bit. So you might have to get used to that with the popping. So hopefully I'm not switching back and forth between the strings too much. Hope you can follow which thing I'm saying about which string, but that is something to keep in mind. And uh, for Sean, can I do a triplet melody on the on the A string? Oh, you said on one string, not, not on the A string. Uh, yes, so I'm going to do it on the different types of strings. So I'm going to do it on the, um, the round wounds and on the uh, rubber strings. I'm gonna leave the flat wounds out for now, but if y'all really wanna hear what it sounds like on there too, I could grab that as well. Um, it works on all of them, it's just a little harder to do on the flat wounds. You wanted triplets though, right? Also, it's harder to get the notes out above the 12th fret. So you can still do it, 
but um, once again, the action is a little bit higher than I'd have on an electric bass. So it's a little bit trickier there. And this is with a um, nut that's specifically designed. Well, actually, this one's not specifically designed for it. I see how, how deep the ridges are, but it's, the action's a lot lower. Um, the nut is adjusted for, for the metal strings. But with the bridge, I'm sure that you could get somebody to file the bridge down a little bit and then put it back on, but that just sounds like a lot of work to me, so it's not, not something that I'm able to do. All right. How about harmonics on the rubber strings? Yeah, the, the harmonics do work on the rubber. They work, they ring out much clearer on the round mounts. So I'll do that on here first and then switch over to there so you can hear it. I'll turn the volume up a little. So you hear how I can even get that one kind of to ring out. And then um, when we're talking about the rubber, I'm talking about the Thunder Gut specifically. Uh, but I think I've seen a video of Bakiti Kumalo, who plays bass with Paul Simon, and he has his own signature e-bass. And he had a video where he was demonstrating harmonics on there, and he got them to ring out very clearly on the Pahoe Hoe strings. So you may want to try them on those as well. You hear that's harder to get the ones over there to ring out. But you can get these other other ones to ring out. So they sound a slight bit more muted than they would on the metal strings. They don't ring out quite as crystal clear. But right now, whatever EQ I have, I have the treble boosted just a little bit and the middle boosted just a little bit. But if you boost the treble too much, you'll get too much attack on the harmonics. Like, let me boost it and so you can hear, it, hear that. And it just makes it hard to not have the string noise. which if you want an attack that's really strong on each note, then that's fine. But they do ring out pretty well on here. I just think that the round wounds are better. And keep in mind, the round wounds I was just playing on are three years old at this point. Um, well, it, by the end of this month, it'll be exactly three years that I've had that, that um, bass ukulele, that U bass. So that's just something to keep in mind. But yes, you can do, you can do harmonics on the rubber strings. You just have to be very, very precise with them. And I kind of like the sound where it's a little bit, can you reach the last chord on Portrait Tracy? I can't remember quite what the last chord is. It's been such a long time since I played that far through it. But there's one stretch in there where you have to play, hold down the second fret and do a false harmonic on the sixth fret. And that's so much more comfortable. Oops, let me turn the treble back up so we have a little bit. But this one right here, that one was always always a pain in the hand for me to try to stretch on the electric bass to get. And sometimes I'd come up with alternate ways to do it, which instead of playing the harmonic over the sixth thread, I'd try to figure out where it would be down here. Sounds like it's right there. Now I can't find it. Oh well, you get the idea. But if you do the if you do the math of the string, if that would be the equivalent of um, the fourth fret harmonic, then you could theoretically find other places. There it is. By just doing the math of the string and splitting it into equal sections and finding it in other places, but. Um, it's probably easier to do the last chord if I could just remember what the thing was. <laughs> I can't remember if you're doing, it was something where you had to stretch to the 12th fret, but I can't remember what fret you're stretching from and you have to get three strings down here. So if it was that one, then the answer is sort of, I can sort of get it. If it wasn't quite that far, then the answer might, might be a lot easier. 
No, it's it's harder. It's still hard to bar because of where the body is. So if, if it's the ninth fret and then and then barring the twelves, then it's not really easier because even though your hands are closer together, they're kind of smushed in there. Oh well, I tried. Right, and so that's, uh, as far as them sounding clearer on here than on the round wound, I think um, part of that is that the strings on the, the round wound strings are three years old. So, um, and it's also that I had the volume up a little bit louder. If I were to boost the volume on there, I think they come out clearer on here. But that's just been my, um, and maybe that I didn't, I didn't mess with the tone much either. If I turn the volume up here, do you hear how clear that one is? Let me mess with the tone a little bit more and see if I can get it louder. Do you hear how clear those are? Those are on the third fret. I couldn't even get those to come out on the on the um, polyurethane strings. So I think they they ring out more like a bell on here, but th there's a cool tonality to the polyurethane strings that you you don't really get with the harmonics on the um, round wound strings. Oh, and as far as the flat wound strings, just while we're mentioning all of those, the flat wound strings don't do harmonics as well. So that is something to keep in mind. And um, that's another thing to adjust to. The electric bass by far can do the harmonics the best. So let me get the electric bass out. Like, you know, I was struggling to get the harmonic out at the third fret, which is technically not right over the third fret. It's technically right in front of the third fret, like 3.2 or something. Wow, now I can't find it at all on here. Let me move this out of the way. But the harmonics ring out. It's really, I guess, 3.4 or something. And there are actually two that you can get between the third fret and the fourth fret that I couldn't get out on the, um, the other ones. But you have to experiment with the tone a little bit to get it to get it quite quite right. So that's what the bridge pick up. And the neck pickups all the way off. So the harmonics definitely ring out better on the full scale electric bass. Right? So that's that's one thing that you'll have to adjust to going from electric to U-bass. Certain things are easier to do. That one stretch in Portrait Tracy that I can't really even do without like really regretting it afterwards. I have to shake my wrist out and make it make it feel okay again is a lot easier as of a stretch on on um, U-bass. But the U-bass uh, doesn't get certain frets to ring out that you kind of need for Portrait of Tracy. So in that sense, it's easier to play it on this bass. I mean, you hear how that's still ringing out. There's also a lot more sustain on the bass guitar. If you play a note, it rings out a lot longer. But yep, so that's, that's the difference there, but great question. Right, and then there is better intonation of the chords. That's true too. So, um, so you know, there are some some sacrifices that you make when you switch over from the electric bass to the U bass, but you gain portability. You gain um, being able to stretch further on the neck. So, like if I'm trying to come up with arrangements and some of the songs, you know, have big stretches like that, they don't hurt as much. 
And there are certain ones that you just wouldn't be able to do on the bass guitar that you can do on the U bass. You'd have to do something totally different and, you know, tap or something. Rather than being able to reach from the third fret to the ninth fret, for instance. Let's see if I can do that. From the third fret to the ninth fret. Whoop. Yeah, so you can do that on the U bass, but it's a really bad idea to try, I think, on the electric bass. My finger would need to be two inches longer to get that stretch. So um, does anybody else have any questions or does or do you have another question? Um, just about the differences and adjusting to bass guitar from, oh, I guess we could do the vice, the vice versa, right? If you're going from U bass to bass guitar, you probably, don't want to do that if you have really bad tendonitis or really bad carpal tunnel sy syndrome or really bad um, arthritis, just because it's just a lot easier to play on U bass. I know there are a lot of people that used to play bass that switched over to U bass um, after not playing for many years because of just how bad their hands had gotten, and then they're able to play when they play on U bass. So I think that's an awesome perk about it. Um, but yeah, you got to get used to your hands being closer together and. Um, you know, just all the stuff we went over earlier. All right. So does anybody else have any questions about the differences between these two or just um, any off topic questions? Now you can just ask, ask some other things just about any individual instrument as well. So I'll, I'll play a little bit on here and change the tone back to the tone I like. <laughs> some reason I have reverb on here. The PA system that I'm playing through happens to have some reverb on it right now. So when I hit a note, you can kind of hear an echo afterwards. That's why. Or you can kind of hear it linger a little bit. That's what that is. All right. So I'm going to do another jam that uses both basses. What kind of jam would you guys like to hear? Name a style and then a key. So any one person can name the style. And once we have the style, we'll just get a key to play in. So let me know what you guys would like to hear in the comment box. I'll speak at once. Hello, hello. So is there a style that you guys would like to hear hear me play the bass and the U bass together in so that you can just kind of hear a difference. Country. Okay. We can do country. So um, I think I'll do the actual bass line on the, um, on the U bass. I wonder if I can split it up. Actually, that'd be an interesting idea. So let me create a little drum beat. Maybe I can boom, da, 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 da. And what key? See G, okay. See. Can't remember how long this pattern is. We'll find out in a second here, I guess. I'm 
gonna do the other half. One, two, three, four. Good. Okay, it was the length I thought it was. I'm gonna do some chords real quick. Not too thrilled with that. that there. All right, so now we've got that part. So the idea Is that when it comes back around, I'll play the bass line on here. So now you got a bass line that's half one bass and half the other bass. Or you don't because I forgot to hit the button. <laughs> Bear with me, guys. We should have one. Now I got to come up with a little melody. All right, so we get a little more mids and treble, so it boosts a little better. Our 
acho que é desse, não sabe o que eu falei. Uh, hoping that these are all in tune with each other. I suppose I can tune this one. So I'm using the loop pedal to put all this together, Jeff. Um, it's called the Digitech Jam Man, and um, you can get a different one. There's a Boss makes a loop pedal too, and uh, they're called loop pedals or loop stations. And so that's what I'm using right now, and it allows you to stomp to start the loop and stomp to stop the loop. Bye, well, Alan. Thanks for hanging out. And um, yeah, so that's what I'm using to loop those things. And then obviously you know which strings I'm using now. For the record, the round wounds I'm using are the collar round wounds. I know there are other brands that make them now. And then, um, and then the Aquila Thunder Guts. And then I think on the Fender, judging by the different colored ends, they're probably some sort of uh, Diodario strings on the round wounds on the um, electric bass. Very cool. And yes, I think that the that these are easier to play fast on. Your fingers don't get caught up on them the same way. react a lot more like electric bass strings, so it makes it easier. Let me try doing some of the same stuff on the on the polyurethane strings and let's see what happens. And uh, the flat wounds you can play fast on too. You can still play pretty fast on them though. Let me turn that treble down a little bit. You still play pretty fast on them. But it cuts through better because of the punchiness of the, um, the other strings. But, I mean, I could boost the treble. It'll just be kind of clicky if I do that. The attack will be very click-centered. <laughs> natural um, if you're used to electric bass strings to play them uh, play faster on the round wounds or the flat wounds but you can play fast I think it just sounds better personally because I mean obviously you've heard people play um, 
what is it, uh, Sir Duke by Stevie Wonder on there a lot. You've heard a whole bunch of other things. It's just to me the tonality kind of lends itself to slower melodies. Something about the way it rings out just does that for me. All right, so does anybody have any other questions about the differences between all these instruments? I'll answer probably one more and then that's that'll do it. But um, basically, if you're tapping, you can tap pretty fast on these. Although sometimes you get a little bit of buzz if you're if you're tapping on strings other than the G. But it's pretty easy to get some fast notes out of there as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, the black tape wounds are pretty cool as well. I haven't actually had tape wounds on any of my full scale electrics, but I may have played one or two at a store before. But um, they're they're interesting too. They probably feel like a good in between between what the polyurethane strings and the um, and the round wound strings feel like. But they're going to have more tension than the um, polyurethane strings because I believe they're just tape wound, which means they're still around a metal core, so they'll still have a similar tension. They just they'll just feel a little bit different, if I'm not mistaken. All right, and this will be the last question. Let's see, what do we got? Is there any ringing at the headstock that needs to be muted, like for guitars? At the headstock itself, like up here? Pretty hard to... It'd be pretty hard to get that to ring out enough to really be an issue. Even though it does, you can make sounds with it. It's not going to ring out anywhere near as much, so probably not. Probably, probably nowhere near as much as guitar, so probably not enough to really question or think about. But that's a great question. All right, and if you're talking about on the other side of the strings, like if you were playing on this side, but but over there, if you're tapping acoustically, you'll be able to hear all that stuff, and you may want to mute up near the headstock for that reason. If that's what you're saying, um, then then you may you may want to because it's an acoustic instrument you'll hear the other side so if you tap let me turn the volume down on the um, amp if you tap here you'll hear that side a little bit but the other the other side over here will be a good amount louder but uh that is a good point you might you might actually hear that as far as with guitar all right well thank you guys for hanging out so much um for so long it's already been an hour over an hour but um i will talk to you guys next week um, and let me know if you have any topics that you think would be really cool for next week. You can leave them in the comments on the side or on the replay. You can just leave them below. Um, if there's just something that you think would make a really cool and interesting topic, I might pick from the comments a little bit on that. But have a great time, a uh, great week, and I will see you guys on Tuesday and Thursday of next week. All right, please subscribe if you haven't already, and I'll see you guys around.